What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Lunar Witch. Today we are going to be talking about how to find your spirit animal. Now ultimately it's actually very easy to figure out which spirit animal has been trying to contact you or you know kind of get your attention and stuff like that but before we even go into how to find your spirit animal we're just going to go over a little bit of information on spirit animals because there is one thing that people really need to understand and that is the culture that it came from. Now in this craft there is a lot of controversy because a lot of people believe that utilization of spirit animals is a closed practice, but it is actually not. Now, ultimately, the concept of spirit animals was brought up in ancient indigenous cultures, specifically Native American cultures. Then later on in the 1990s, it was adopted by the pagan and Wiccan religions as well, which is kind of where people stem that controversy of, well, it's a closed practice, you can't practice that, you can't do this, you can't do that. Actually, one of the biggest things that the Native American cultures didn't want you to do that they did consider very rude and disrespectful to their culture was copying their totems and their drawings that they utilized on their totems. That in particular was something that they specifically asked people not to do if you weren't part of those cultures due to the fact that it was extremely disrespectful. But to utilize the practice of spirit animals is not a closed practice considering it was adopted in the Wiccan and pagan religions in the 1990s. Now, spirit animals to indigenous cultures were these uh, guides that took the shape of an animal that you share characteristics with, that you personally had or shared a characteristic with, and this animal would guide you through the journey, through your spiritual journey that you were supposed to be going through. The concept is fairly the same for the Wiccan and Pagan religions, it just doesn't go as in depth. Mainly one of the biggest things with spirit animals within the Wiccan and Pagan religions are they're just your spirit guides that take the form of spirit animals in order to guide you through whatever it is that they need to guide you through. Pretty self-explanatory and you can kind of see that obviously the two definitions for spirit animals between the indigenous cultures and the Wiccan and Pagan religions, they're fairly the same. And it's really nice too because you do realize with like certain religions too, um, you get a lot of like things where they'll take ideas from other cultures and then they'll twist and turn them and kind of make them into these like weird things that kind of inhibit into their beliefs. but. With the Wiccan and Pagan religion, when they took the idea of spirit animals, they didn't want to mess with it. They didn't want to change up the definition. They just kind of left it as is because they wanted to be respectful when utilizing spirit animals within your craft. So that's what I really do like about this concept is that they didn't go and try to turn it around and be disrespectful and kind of like separate people. What they did was they just kept the definition the same as the spirit animal would be in the indigenous cultures and utilize them in the same ways. But obviously, as I said, you still have to kind of keep in mind that indigenous cultures have asked people that are not part of that community to not utilize their drawings or totems that they have utilized within their culture as well. It's just a huge sign of disrespect and in order to respect that culture, if you are not part of it, just don't do it. You know, obviously, if you're not part of that culture, don't go buying a totem and placing it on your altar or something like that. Don't go and find a totem of the animal that you know, you're potentially working with and place that on your altar if you're not part of that culture, that's gonna just be super disrespectful. So don't go off and do things like that, but if you do wanna practice and utilize and find your spirit animal, we are now gonna get into that now as to how you can find it because that in itself is not a closed practice. So let's get into that right now. Now, I know this first one's gonna sound fairly redundant, but the biggest thing that you can do is take a quiz. Quizzes are actually super good at kind of opening your mind, opening your eyes to specific possibilities that maybe you would have not been able to figure out without that quiz. Now, I'm not saying to go on and find a quiz that's just a random quiz that has a bunch of ads pop up. Obviously, try to find a spiritual website that has these kind of quizzes that you can take in order to kind of see if you are connected to a specific animal or not. And then if it does say that you are connected to a specific animal, you can kind of gauge through that quiz why you're connected to that animal. What characteristics did you you click in that quiz that were connected to that animal and that's going to kind of show you why you're connected to that uh, spirit animal. This quiz is also going to just kind of give you a better understanding of yourself and you know it's just when you're going through those quizzes and you're clicking those questions and you're clicking those answers um, you know and you're reading and you're seeing all this stuff you're kind of learning things about yourself too. You might click on something where it asks you a question that 
you know, maybe people don't ask you too often. And when you look at it, you really think to yourself, like, wow, like, I don't really get asked this question too often. And then you look at the answers and you click an answer that, you know, obviously fits you a little bit more. This is you being able to learn about yourself a little bit more so that when you do find that spirit animal that you're connected with, you can understand why you're connected to that spirit animal. What characteristics did you have that met the same characteristics as that spirit animal that is calling out to you? You understand. So with that being said, let's move on to the next thing here, which is pay attention to your dreams. Now, your dreams are huge when it comes to finding certain things within your witchcraft, especially when it comes to spirit guides, spirit animals, um, deities, anything along those lines, you gotta pay attention to your dreams. And this is why I tell people all the time to keep a dream journal, because if you keep a dream journal, when you wake up in the morning, one of the biggest things that people do when they wake up is they'll remember bits and pieces of their dreams and then you know as they start to wake up a little more you, you think to yourself you're like what did I just dream about last night so ultimately keeping a dream journal close to your uh, place that you sleep whether you sleep obviously in your room you know if you're sleeping on the couch overnight you know maybe you made somebody angry who knows just keep a dream journal near you so if you keep that dream journal near you when you wake up in the morning you can kind of jot down which animal you saw in your dream maybe there was multiple animals that kind of popped up in your dream and then keep that journal as time goes on and try to make connections as to which animals popped up most in your dreams because that right there could be the spirit animal that has been trying to call out for you. Once you can identify that spirit animal, start to go and research that spirit animal, understand the characteristics, what it has to deal with when it's trying to um, connect with you as your spirit animal, and so on and so forth. I am also going to be starting a little mini-series, I just wanted to take a second to tell you guys that, on spirit animals, where I'm going to take specific animals and tell you what the characteristics of those animals are, what they mean to you within your spirit, uh, as your spirit guide, as your spirit animal, what they mean to you, and so on and so forth. This will go over definitions of like how they are as a power animal, how they are as a spirit animal, how they're going to guide you, what their characteristics are. This is what that mini-series is going to be about, so I just want to tell you guys that before I move on to the next uh, little tab here as to how you can find your spirit animal because I just don't want people to be confused because once you do find your spirit animal I kind of figured that mini series would be super helpful because say you got a wolf right because mine's a wolf so if you go and you know I have that mini series of wolf spirit animal and you find out that yours is a wolf you can just go and click that real quick try to figure out some characteristics and how it could be more beneficial how you're connected to that spirit animal so moving on to the next tab here, think about connections that you specifically have with animals. Is there a specific animal that like walks up to you constantly? Do you own a farm and like maybe there's like, you know, a specific animal that you own that like constantly wants to give you attention? This could be your spirit animal. Me personally, I've always been connected with dogs. I've always been connected with anything within the dog family. One of the biggest things that I realized when I was connected with wolves is I was actually at the Buffalo Zoo. I was out here and I went up and we were going through the zoo all day. We finally got to the wolf exhibit. Now, when I got to the wolf exhibit, everybody was like, oh, there's no wolf out today. He doesn't want to come out. He's been in there all day. And uh, even the lady who is the caretaker to that wolf even said, you know, he usually spends most of his time inside the cave. Well, I walked there and I was just looking around and all of a sudden I saw his head poke up. And as his head poked up, he saw me, I just waved. I just went like that, got up, walked down, walked right up to the fence where I was at. Right then and there, that is not a normal thing to happen. So I thought about that in my head and I immediately went and started to kind of research the spirit animal with the wolf. And when I found out the characteristics and how that spirit animal is connected, I was super shocked because of, with the things that I looked up and the ways that I found that it was connected to my characteristics, it resonated with me a lot. So in order to see that and see that happen, it was awesome. So I feel like keeping those tabs are super, super good within trying to find your spirit animal. And let's kind of just go over this last tab here real quick, but if you really want to find your spirit animal too, just kind of keep a journal. I know a lot of people don't really like to write and do things like that, but to keep a journal on uh, animals that maybe you feel connected to specifically, like say that you're out and about and you're kind of going around and you see like a cat and you're just like, wow, I really like, I feel connected to that animal and like spiritually I just 
and really like cats, you know, that right there could just be something that you jot down in your journal. And after you jot it down, maybe go and research what cats have to deal with spiritual-wise when they are a spirit animal, what kind of characteristics they have to deal with and see if anything resonates with you because when you go back into your journal, you can kind of copy those down, you can write it out, and then you can personally see it and make those connections. This is a huge and real easy way to find your spirit animal. Now guys, I know there was a lot of information in this video and obviously you're more than welcome to go back in these videos. You're more than welcome to take down any information that you want to take down. Every single thing that I tell you guys in every single video that I make is information for every single one of you to take down, jot down, put it in your book of shadows, put it in your journals, whatever it may be. You're more than welcome to take that information down. And obviously, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you're just seeing this channel for the first time, I have noticed that there is a substantial amount of people that are watching the videos, but not subscribing to the channel. So if you are watching the videos and you do enjoy the content and you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel because it's super helpful for me to get my content out there to people that really, really could use this and utilize this for their craft. So please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, become part of the Lunar Witch family. Family. And obviously, if you have any comments or concerns, whether it comes to spirit animals or anything like that, leave that down in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to um, kind of talk you guys through it, help you guys out in whichever ways I can. And until next time, I will see you guys here on the Lunar Witch.